All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this three in one multimeter from B side. It's the B side 09. It is a traditional multimeter. It is a signal generator and oscilloscope. Today, we're going to take a look at it and see what it does. I did want to mention before we get started that I was contacted by the folks at Banggood and they asked if I would do a review of this particular product. And of course, I said yes, because I like three in one multimeters. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. <coughs> All right, we got this baby powered up and I need to be a little bit careful with it because when I move it around, you can see my camera reflecting in the top. But this is in its multimeter setting. And then you can just go over here to this mode button. And then when you switch that, here goes the signal generator. And then here goes the oscilloscope. The buttons feel nice. It has a rubbery coating on the outside. Typically, these are to give you some traction so you don't drop it. And they also work for blast protection in the event that you do something silly and you put too much voltage or current into this device. Let's just take a look at it. It's got this key panel down here and it comes with a couple of warning stickers. Those warning stickers are for some inputs on the bottom. So here are your multimeter inputs. And then you have two more over here for measuring current. This thing says that it can measure up to 20,000 amps. It's got to be a typo. Um, I don't know, and I'm certainly not going to put that much current through here. So let's just take these warning stickers off. But you can see right here, it says 20,000 amps max. I'm not 100% sure how that works. Maybe it can do it uh, with some sort of device or add-on, but I'm not looking at that. This says it's fused, and this is 200 milliamps max on this particular port. Here's your common, and then here's your input, and it's true RMS, or you can do peak. And then down here, you can see that you can measure voltage, ohms, continuity, diodes, capacitance, and temperature. On the side, you can peel this baby up, and then you have these little probe tips here. I guess they're not really probe tips, but they're calibration standards. And that is for calibrating the probe that comes for the oscilloscope function. We'll take a look at that. And you have a USB-C port here. You can connect this thing up to your computer. And after you save files or images to it, you can download them to your computer. Or you can charge the device this way. It has a built-in lithium-ion battery. At the top, we have three BNC connectors. One is for oscilloscope channel one, channel two. And then over here, you have an output. And that is if you're using your sine wave, I mean your signal generator. So right here it says it's got 50 megahertz of bandwidth. It says it's CAT2 and it is rated for 400 volts. All right, well, let's do some testing. I forgot to mention it comes in this box, but that's not important. And then it also comes with this, and this is kind of cool. It's a hard zipper case and it's got a bunch of stuff in here, like a manual. Oh, this is a certificate of authenticity or calibration or something. Instruction manual. We have some probes, they have the shrouds on them, and uh, these probes feel like they have a PVC jacket, so I like the silicon jacket ones better. Maybe they are silicon, I don't know. Anyhow, it's got probes, and then it's got this thing, which is like a BNC cable with two alligator clips on the end. You can clip those things to measure signals, and then it comes with two oscilloscope probes and a USB-C cable. Awesome. Okay, right now it's set up to measure multimeter stuff. And you can see right now for voltage, it's got these two lights blinking. So it tells you where you need to pr plug your probes in when you're doing some probe in. So let me uh, get these all untangled. And we're going to just go ahead and we're going to plug those in. There we go. Now over here, we've got something called the DMM Check Plus, and this is a tool that we use to test or measure multimeter stuff. Right now, I've got it set for DC voltage. So let's go ahead and put these on here and see what we see. And this should read right around 5 volts, and it looks like we're close enough. I think that that's probably well within spec. One of the things I want to mention, this is 20,000 count uh, multimeter which is pretty good. That means it has up to five digits of what they call it, uh, four and a half digits of resolution because the half digit is the two. 20,000 counts only goes up to two. But that's pretty good. It's a lot more than most uh, multimeters that you see on the market. Let's see if we can switch this over to AC. Let's see what happens when we put this on here if it automatically changes. No, it's telling me it's zero volts DC. So I guess I've got to go in here somehow and figure out how to change that. 
Okay, we figured it out. In order to switch from AC to DC, while we still have this red circle around our voltage set, setting, I guess, designation icon, we just hit one of these up or down arrows and it switches it. So let's go over to the DMM check plus and put it on here and we see just under five volts, which I think is pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we are going to measure some resistance. And I think we start at uh, 100 kilo ohms, then we'll go to 10 and then one kilo ohm, and then we will go to 100 ohms of resistance. So what I need to do is I need to move this over one for ohms. Let's go ahead and test. Okay, and you can see down at the bottom, it's telling us that it is kilo ohms here, 100. And that would probably be close enough. This should be 10 kilo ohms. There we go. <clears throat> One kilo ohm. And then 100 ohms. And there we go. Okay, now we are going to move this over to capacitance. And our first measurement is going to be one microfarad. And you can see we are right around one microfarad. This is going to be 0.1 microfarad. And that is 100 nanofarads, and we're good there. This is going to be 0.01 microfarads. And that would be 10 nanofarads. And this is going to be 0.001 microfarads. And that would be one nanofarad and we're good. I moved back over to our resistance because I forgot to show continuity testing. There you go, a little slow to lock, but uh, it does it. Okay, we moved this thing over here to milliamps and you can see this designation here is showing us that we had to move our probes and we did that. And so the first thing we're gonna do is measure some DC current. And look at that, we are right where we wanna be at one milliamp. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch this thing over to AC and do the same measurement. And I have to hit this button to switch over to AC. And uh, we're pretty close. 0.988. All right, so I moved it all the way over to the temperature one. And this does not come with a thermal couple that I can see or find anywhere. It's reading right now 23 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that means. So let's move that over to Fahrenheit. 73, that feels about right. Okay, we are now in the signal generator mode. One of the things I noticed is, is that if I switch modes and go over to the oscilloscope and feed the signal back into itself, it doesn't detect it. So I think that when you switch these, the other function is turned off. Not all these devices do that, but this one does. So here we are. And this right now says that we're putting out a one kilohertz sine wave. You can see down here, wave equals sine. And it's a 50% duty cycle, but we're not really doing that because we're doing a sine wave, not a square wave. And it's at three volts. So I have this going into my um, oscilloscope over here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that real quick and see what we see. So here's our oscilloscope. And you can see that that's not a sine wave. But I think what the challenge is is that... It is putting out three volts and that's probably not what it's rated to do here. So let me change the voltage down to something. Here we are, 2.5. And uh, that actually looks pretty good. You can see that we have some measurements on the bottom. Voltage peak to peak is 2.5, 2.49. It's bouncing around a little bit and it's showing one kilohertz as the input. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up to frequency and I'm going to up this a little bit. And that is one megahertz. Let me go ahead and adjust the oscilloscope. And there's our sine wave and a little bit of deformation on there, but it looks like it's reading accurately. Let's go ahead and see if we can do two megahertz. And that's not too bad. There's three megahertz and we're starting to get some different, well, it doesn't look too bad for four. You can see our voltage peak to peak is dropping. This is five megahertz. And that's as high as it will go. 
Let's take a look at some other waves. This is just a DC. This would be a sawtooth at 2 megahertz. I guess that is where it taps out. This is full rectification. This would be half wave rectified. This would be triangle wave. This would be square. Let's take a look at the frequency and let's drop that down a little bit and see what it looks like. There is one megahertz. And let's go to one kilohertz. 2 kilohertz. Let me turn that up a little bit. We'll go to 10 kilohertz. And let's auto it in a little bit. So that looks pretty good. All right, let's get this unplugged. Let's get this set to oscilloscope by hitting the mode button. And let's take a look in this bag and see what actually came in it. So we have two probes, and that's awesome that they sent two probes. Here we have this black screwdriver looking thing. That's our probe compensation device. And then you have some color coordination stuff that you can put on your probes. That way you can coordinate with your outfit. And then let's take a quick look at our probe. So here's our probe. You pull this back and then you have a hook that you can connect to whatever it is that you're testing. These probes also come apart. At least I think they should. Well, maybe they don't. There we go. That jammed me in the hand a little bit. But uh, you can use this if you just want to do kind of like touch on your on whatever it is you're measuring versus using the hook. All right, so now we have the oscilloscope connected to a signal generator that's on a different oscilloscope over there. Uh, you can see that we just have a coaxial cable coming right in here to channel one. And if I move this up, we should be able to see the entire oscilloscope and the whole control panel. And so right now, let me switch over to the scope screen, and you can see we've got a sine wave. If you look on the right-hand side, it's at a frequency of 1 kilohertz. Amplitude is 500 millivolts, or half of a volt. Let's go back to here, and you can see the sine wave right here. A couple things to notice. If you take a look down here, I've got some measurements, and we'll take a look at how we do that. Turn to one, it says our voltage peak to peak is 4,800 millivolts. So it's off by about 20 millivolts. And our frequency is one kilohertz. So that's pretty exact. Uh, if I hit this button here, we are in the volt and time uh, menu. And then I can actually hit this menu button. And there's other things that we can do, like toggle on channel two. Um, let's see if I can see what that says. We can enable it. We can couple. Right now we're AC coupled. Uh, if we had a probe set up, here's where we would change our probe. This is X1. You can change that to X10. Um, here's some other settings here around triggering. And we have the trigger mode is auto. It's set for rising on channel 1. And trigger position is 50%. <clears throat> some other settings that we have in here are, let me see, auto off. And that is uh, if it turns itself off. You can, you can turn it so it sets itself off after inactivity. Um, backlight we set for 30% just because of the way this camera works. Uh, it says voice is open. That means it makes those beeps. And then our language is English. We have the ability to uh, do a calibration and reset to default settings. And then USB source is set to enter. So you can actually connect this to your computer and then you can save captures or screenshots. Here is the firmware version. And there is... Um, cursor settings right now we have the cursor set for horizontal so you can see those there we can change that here and now we have vertical cursors let's go back uh, here's both and they're off and now they are back to vertical and then here is the measurement function I wanted to talk about so what you do is you go into this measurement setting and then what you can do is is that you press menu to enter and then we can move the cursors around so like if we wanted to look at our voltage maximum we would do this and then we would press menu and that turns it on <clears throat> and we can also move around and see other things like duty cycle uh, if, if we were doing a square wave and let's hit f3 to exit and now you can see those additional uh, measurements down here and if i move over one more we can go over here and then you can see that we have the display is YT, 
uh, our persistence is minimum format is begin. And then our backlight time is set for 120 seconds. So pretty sand standard stuff for a device or a tool like this. Anyhow, let's get out of here. And I think we just hit the menu button to get out of here. And then you can go over to F2, which would allow you to actually move your, your sine wave if you wanted to move it, well, your signal, if you wanted to move it somewhere on the screen. And then we can go over here to adjust our trigger. And here is where we can move our cursors around. So for example, I can move this down if I wanted to maybe measure this in a different way than using the measurement function. And that is now allowing me to move the bottom one. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch back over to the oscilloscope and we're going to mess with this stuff a little bit. So right now our frequency is set for one kilohertz. Let's go ahead and adjust that. Let's say we wanted to do one megahertz. And let's say we were going to change this to something other than sine wave. We could come down and take a look at a ramp, for example. And let's come back. Oh, you know what else I wanted to do? I wanted to change the amplitude. And let's go with one volt. Okay, now we're going to switch back to the oscilloscope. And there you can see the waveform has changed. Now you can do other things like you can change the... Um, size of the graticules uh, from a height and a width standpoint. If you see right now, it's hard to read, but there are 500 millivolts. I can change that. Um, let me get out of here, go back to voltage and time. And now they are at one volt per graticule. Okay, I wanted to finish this up. Just taking a quick look at where you can pick this up at Banggood. There'll be a link below. Right now it is $73.99 and I might have a code that'll get you a little bit more of a discount. If I do, it will be in the description below. When you buy this thing, a couple things to pay attention to. This is the single oscilloscope probe. You can come over here and you can get a dual probe or you can come over here and you can just buy this flexible coil. Not 100% sure what that's gonna do. But what I would do is I would get the dual oscilloscope probe. It's only $5 more for an additional probe. And that seems like a pretty good deal. You can also come on here and you can see some of the other specifications if that's something that I didn't cover that you're interested in. And that's going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. It's much appreciated.